the Lord. Shall we join our hands once more? Kwa, thank you very much. God richly bless you. Beloved, we are grateful to God for the fourth day of the Prophetic and Giant Convention 2014. God has been so gracious to us. We've been receiving the word of God. Powerful insight being brought to us by the servant of God. Thank God the servant of God is in our midst tonight for the Lord to use him to minister his precious word to us. He's a friend to First Baptist Church. He's ministered here several times. Beloved, as an honor to the Most High God, I want us to stand as we welcome Prophet Eric Oklu, Living Fountain Baptist Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we please lift up our hands to him? Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you that you are here in our means. Speak to us. Reveal things that are hidden. Let yokes be broken. Let burdens be lifted. Let every giant be slain by the hands of your people. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in church? Please, if you are excited, can you give God a clap offering, somebody? Give him a clap offering. Hallelujah. It's an honor to be here tonight again. We want to hear God's word. Tonight, I want to speak on the Trinity of Triumph. Now, as we talk about the giants felt by the hands of the people. It gives us a picture of victory. And today we want to look at three things that can give us victory any day, any time, any season. Are you here with me? Yesterday, I spoke on the unstoppable force of faith. And I said that our fight in life is a fight of faith. The devil is not after your money. The devil is after your faith. If he succeeds in getting your faith, he will succeed in getting your money. But if you have a solid faith, the devil is not a problem at all. Turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. It's a very popular scripture in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. So I'm speaking tonight on the Trinity of Triumph. Now, these three remain faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, with the oppression of these three forces in your life, your victory in any battle is guaranteed. Faith, hope, and love. Are you here with me? Now, when I was talking about faith, I said that when you read the Bible, the Bible talks about the fact that you should take the shield of faith so that you'll be able to stop all the arrows of the enemy. But faith does not operate in isolation. Faith operates with certain things to make it faith. And when you understand these three forces, ladies and gentlemen, there is no battle you, you will not win. 
they can even put you in fire. You still come out. Now, before I begin to talk about these three forces, I want to give you an example in the Bible. It's a very popular scripture we know in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. There is a scripture there I want us to look at. And we'll see these three forces in operation in that particular scripture. And in the life of somebody called Abraham in the Bible. Then we'll see that when these three forces are in operation in your life, ladies and gentlemen, you will always be victorious. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 3 verse 16 to 18. The Bible says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to answer thee in this matter. But if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. That is hope. Our God we serve is able to deliver us. That is hope. And says that, and he would deliver us. That is faith. Then he said, even if he does not deliver us, we will not bow. That is love. And when those three forces were in operation, God appeared in the fire. There was a fourth man in the fire. He says that our God will deliver us hope. Even if he does not deliver and we know he will deliver us faith. But even if he does not deliver us, we will not bow. That is love. When you read the second scripture about Abraham, Abraham is a very popular scripture in the Bible. People, people know about. You know, one of the things people like doing is to jump on the promises of God. But they forget about the conditions attached to the promise. And the Bible says something in the book of Isaiah that Look unto Abraham your father. I called him alone and I bless him. In other words, if you want to be blessed like Abraham, do what Abraham did. So let's look at the life of Abraham in the Bible. You see these three forces in oppression in the life of Abraham. So turn your Bibles again with me to the book of Genesis. Today they are read a lot of scriptures, so don't. Genesis 22, verse 2. This is an account where God told Abraham to go and sacrifice his only son. And Abraham decided to go, decided to obey God, to go and sacrifice his only son. And let's see these three forces at work in the life of Abraham. So, so, to make things very short, can you turn your Bibles to Genesis 22 verse 5? He said, and Abraham said to these young men, in other words, the people that were following Abraham to go for the sacrifice. This is what Abraham told them. And Abraham said unto the young men, I bide ye here with the axe. I and the Lord will go and worship and come again to you. That is hope. Because God was telling him to go and sacrifice the son. So the son was not coming back. But he told the young men, you people should be here. I am going with my son for sacrifice. And the two of us will come back. That is hope. Then number two, the son asked him, the son asked him, no, what are we going to use for the sacrifice? So when you look at the, the verse Verse 10 to 12 of that same uh, Genesis 22. You see faith in oppression. Genesis 22 verse 10. Look at what, look, 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 look at what he said. Le, the verse 8. Le verse 8. Look at what he said. The, the, the son asked the father, where is the lamb we use for the sacrifice? And Abraham said this. My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. That is faith. Then they go to the altar for the sacrifice and Abraham tied his only son and lifted up the knife to kill him. That is love. So, 
And then when Abraham did that, God decided to swear. He said, Abraham, if you don't want to be rich, it's too late. He said, I will bless you. I swear by myself that in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. What provoked this this sworn blessing? Faith, hope, and love. They are the trinity of triumph. Anybody that oppress in faith, oppress in hope, and oppress in love, that person walk in unprecedented triumph. Now, let, let me talk about these three things. Number one, hope. Ladies and gentlemen, to be hopeless in life is to be helpless. As a matter of fact, faith does not deliver without hope. Just like a man, no woman can give birth without a strong man. In the same way, Faith cannot deliver without hope. In other words, hope is the wife of faith. And their product is wonders. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter the situation you are going through, have hope. To be hopeless is to be grounded in life. Anybody who is hopeless, God can never do anything for the person. Because when your hope is dead, your faith does, your faith becomes impotent. I read my Bible in the book of Job. It said a tree, when it is cut, it has hope that at the scent of water, it will sprout again. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what battles you have fought. I don't know what has delivered, defeated you. But I have news for you. Let your hope come alive that your tomorrow will be better than your today. One day Moses were, was leading the Egyptian, the, the Israelites. And the Egyptians were running after them. And Moses as a prophet stood by the Red Sea and told them, Ladies and gentlemen, have hope. The Egyptians you are seeing today, you shall see them no more. I came to prophesy to somebody. that what, what, You see, when your hope is dead, the devil has succeeded in killing you. No matter how it looks like. You may be 70 years and you don't have a child. Don't be dead. Let your hope not be dead. Because I read my Bible. The Bible said that Abraham believed in hope against all hope. That means that there was no hope at all for him. But he still has hope that whatever God has promised, he will come to he will bring it to fulfillment. I prophesy over somebody. Your hope is coming alive one more time. Hope. Hope is the wife of faith. Listen, don't give up on yourself. I said, don't give up on yourself. God has not finished with you yet. The fact that you are, you are, you are, you, 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 your background should not be the reason why your back should be on the ground. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where the devil has put you. It doesn't matter what people are saying about you. What God has said about you is more important than the opinions of people. Let them laugh at you. Let them make mockery of you. But when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, we were like men that dream. I have hope that your captivity will be turned. You have lost your job, so what? Have hope. One day I traveled and I lost my my luggage. And I was sad. The Lord told me, if you had lost anything at all, I'm the reason you have not lost everything. No matter, you can be in a relationship and the guy will walk away from you. It's a clear indication. Listen, nothing cannot come in if nothing works out. The fact that he walks out is a clear indication that God wants to bring something better. Don't kill yourself because you are going through a situation. Have hope. The future is bright. Tomorrow will be better. I said tomorrow will be better. I read my Bible in the book of Ecclesiastes. He said, a, a, a living dog is better than a dead lion. Ah, ah, ah. The path of the just is like the shining light. It shines more and more until the perfect day. Can I prophesy to you? 
your tomorrow will call your today a liar i didn't hear your amen i'm prophesying to somebody you see your today will look at your tomorrow and when your tomorrow is coming your today will be hiding because the difference between your tomorrow and your today will be like the heavens and the earth i prophesy over your life i prophesy over your life i prophesy over your life let hope come alive in your spirit i remember some years ago when we finished school we we we, we, were, we had people that got jobs their anchors were in high position they got jobs they were in cars when you see them passing you want to hide yourself but right now when you see those people you see it is not how fast people run he said the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first it, it doesn't matter who has gone ahead listen 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 one day the lord told me something one day i was in the flight and and i was sitting by the window seat and the plane was about to land and the big ties of the plane fell on the ground and i was wondering how the small tie will be able to catch up with the speed of the big tie and the lord told me something say don't measure your life by things you are going through measure your life by my ability and by my possibilities so it doesn't matter he said the race is not to the sweet the battle is not for the strong i know people that have become rich and tomorrow they are no more there i know people that have become rich and tomorrow they are no more there have hope that tomorrow will be better don't hang your clothes don't hang your shoe because god has not finished with you yet you see even when you are dead and you are put in the grave god has not finished with you he said at the sound of the trumpet we shall all be changed so even when you are dead even in your death god has not finished with you can i prophesy can i prophesy hope is something you don't need to allow anybody to temper with your hope a hope a hopeful man cannot be granted that is why the bible said that faith is the substance of things hoped for if you don't hope for it faith cannot deliver it so faith only delivers things you hope for Charlie. Hope for things. There is one thing police people cannot arrest you for. That is the things you hope for. You cannot be taken to court for them. Hope for things. Look into the future. Begin to look at your marriage. Begin to look at breakfast in bed. Begin to look at your car. Begin to look at your house. Begin to hope for a car. Begin to hope for your baby. Be begin to hope for things. Hope for it. I say hope for it. Don't allow anybody to kill your hope. Somebody say your nose is big. The person is insulting God. When I look at people, I look at the way God is. He said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. If somebody's eyes is not good, and he says you are unfearfully made, that is the person's business. But so far as heaven is concerned, so far as heaven is concerned, God sat down and molded you and released you into the market. So don't allow anybody who cannot even work on, on you or even create a person's arm make you depressed. Because the devil cannot grant you until you are depressed. And anytime you are depressed, the devil moves in. Listen, everybody who is depressed depends on people. And when you depend on people, you have sold your right to say no. I'm praying for people here today that their hope will come alive. Your hope will come alive. Please give somebody a high five. Tell the person, let your hope come alive. The person didn't hear it. Give the person a high five. So hope is the foundation of faith. Hope is the womb of faith. Hope is the goal setter. Faith is what gets the goal. So if you don't hope for it, you can't attain, you can't touch it. Listen, 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 listen. I don't know what kind of battle you are fighting. 
But you see, before David killed Goliath, he has already hoped and said what he would do to Goliath. You shall be victorious. I said you shall be victorious. You are in that company, you are doing almost all the junky jobs. When I was working in the bank, my boss, he doesn't do anything. That's why he's boss. He doesn't do anything. When he knows he has a meeting and uh, management team meeting and things like that, he will give the other people that he knows are very clever in his department. He will give them assignment. Do this, do this, do this. And all the people will put it together. Then he will line all of you to sit before him. Why do you say this and this and this? Then you are saying, Elenoko, qualification pay you. will not know about you here. So after the management meeting, the news will go. You know, in the bank, they have, they have this. Uh, it, it, it is not only in the banking hall. For instance, in the banking hall, when a customer, a, 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 a worker or a teller or something does very well, they pick his picture there as the best worker of the month. In, in the other head office too, they do the same thing. And when they go for the management meeting, he comes with praise. They sing praises about him. And it is the people under him. When bonuses are coming, the yes is big. Ours are small. But when we were sitting there, we were hopeful that we will not remain there forever. And now, you will not be a, 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 a sower of Obifa forever. Have hope that one day somebody will also carry your farm. Hey, I remember some years ago, eh, I used to be in church. I would sweep church. I carried chairs and canopies on my head. I was sweeping chairs at, at church, doing all kinds of jobs in the church. But as I was doing it, I have hope that one day, listen. Nowadays, I don't iron my clothes. They come and iron it for me. Free of charge. But some years ago, the person who brought me to Christ, I will go to him, I wash his clothes, iron them, lay his bed, clean everything. But when I was doing it, I was hopeful that one day, I will also be like him and somebody will do it for me. You cannot be granted when you are hopeful. You have write an examination and, and fail. So what? Go and ask all the people who wrote examination and they failed. They were still hopeful. I said they were still hopeful. I said they were still hopeful. Do they receive grace to be hopeful? I said receive grace to be hopeful. Can we have church service here? Be hopeful. First Baptist Church, be hopeful. Be hopeful that a time is coming. You will start three services. A time is coming. You will start four services. Be hopeful. When I was a young, I was not even a prophet. And I was leading prayer meeting. I said things so. People were angry. They squeezed their face. Up for this lanky guy here. Eric, I said things. I remember one day I stood in church. I said, I will fly around the world. My father owns no donkey. People were angry, but it came to pass. It came to pass life and colored. Because I was hopeful. He said, remove that depressed. People see you and anytime they enter your environment, they become sad. You infest them with sadness. Every time they see you, there is something wrong with you. There are certain homes and certain marital homes. When you enter, there is tension. There is serious tension between husband and wife. Wife, maid. There is tension all over the place. The maid is breaking place in the kitchen. Everybody is breaking things. But ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, when there is joy in the place. People are hopeful. They are joyful. Because you see, when you are hopeful, you see, hope is future tense. 
So when you are hopeful, it's like you are seeing a brighter tomorrow. The, 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 even when the devil makes you blind, you're, you're, you have a spiritual eyes that can see. See it, see it, see it. Young girls, see it. Stop seeing yourself cooking for your husband all the time. What you don't see is not qualified to come into your hands. See it. See yourself driving a car. Don't be picturing ah, for you there. Every dream you are dreaming, you are in trouble. <laughs> and you wake up in the morning, you are so sad. And then you put on the radio or put on put in a, a cassette. And the cassette is that a radio ubeku. Then I mean kwami breast. Then you are crying in addition. But anybody who is hopeful, you can sleep at the wrong side of the bed. You wake up and wake up in the morning. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Be hopeful. And then they say some virus has come. Be hopeful that it will not catch you. You see, one of the things the devil uses to trap people is fear. Do you know that death is not powerful like fear? One of the most powerful, the first powerful weapon of the devil is fear. Christ did not come to deliver us